So Roger, data science is a term that the industry as a whole has started to take up, but what do we actually mean by it? No, we really mean a broad set of interdisciplinary skills, and it, we range it from on the data management side, being able to handle big data, being able to dis have distributed data, acquiring data. That includes things like parsing and deduping, conditioning it so that it's useful. Then trying to get insight from it. And of course, math and stats are kind of the foundation of that. But there's machine learning, there's natural language processing. And for telling the story, visualization is an important part of that. And part of machine learning a lot of times means crowdsourcing uh, data. And tying it all together is this notion of culture, which I think we'll probably be talking some about, is that having all those things doesn't matter too much if you don't know how to interpret and so forth. I also want to bring up probability as a special case. A lot of people misunderstand probability, and that's an important part of machine learning and the stats that make up, uh, make up data science. I like to think it's mostly supporting trying to tell stories from, from the data. Right. So it's actually quite a broad field you just identified. Um, I'd like to ask, you know, what kind of person does this and do they do all of it? Yeah, no one would be perfect at all of it, of course. The thing that we hear people in the industry say is master of one and knowledge about all the others. And in fact, I think that's what kind of characterizes this kind of modern era of data science. Not much is new in this. What's probably new is that one person can perhaps do all of it. You don't have to silo as much. So, I mean, in my own case, I do all the pieces of it. I'm probably not good at all of them, <laughs> but I at least can, and the tools have gotten good enough where, like, managing big data isn't a, isn't a problem, where at one time it was, the kind of thing that would take up a lot of resources. Visualizing, there's kind of a pattern emerging of, or at least a pattern that I use around what to visualize. Uh, the machine learning people use, I think, like Toby Segaran's Programming Collective Intelligence books, capture some of the basic ways some of that works. And I also work with someone who's got a PhD in math, who knows a lot of the math stuff. I don't know anywhere near as much as he does about that, but I can work with him, figure out what to apply, and I've improved my own uh, skills in that area. And over time, I've tried to pay attention and get better at the storytelling. What helps you uh, convey the data and the story best to the people who who need to see it, and always trying to um, pay attention to that. Now, having said that, I think there's an, a couple of underlying things. The big one is curiosity, and knowing that that an end result isn't necessarily the analysis, but that that starts bringing up a lot of new questions uh, that you probably want to explore. And in fact, if you're thinking about data science yourself, that's probably a good test: is do you always want to find out more? In, in, in go further into it. So there's this sense in which data scientists aren't merely compiling reports, they're entrepreneurial about the data that they work with. Absolutely, you should, you know, the data is there to hopefully have a story in it and it's your job to as objectively as possible get in, into that and to figure out what's important and that's really like in a lot of ways a, a business decision. And then be able to say that in a way that makes sense to the people who need the data, typically decision makers, or in your own um, decision making. Uh, one of the things that I've supported on my analytic teams is this notion of supply side analytics, where if you think about a data science organization might be at the center of a lot of what's going on in the company. And they might be able to kind of commission their own analysis that no one else would think of doing that might bring up some very interesting stuff. So in that way, Literally, we try to be entrepreneurial in, in applying the data science to it. So um, J.C. Hertz talks about analytics as a black box and kind of witch doctory. You know, that the idea that uh, the people who run a company have, just, have heard that data is important. Everybody knows that. And they wheel in the data scientists and say, here, analytics this for me, which is kind of a very <clears throat> wrong-headed way of understanding the function of data science. How well do you think organizations uh, are adapting to data science and what can they do best to kind of get the best out of their scientists? Right. Well, when I agree with JC, it's a bad dynamic when that happens. People need to invest. They need to understand some of what's going on. They don't need to be an expert, but they need to understand what, when they're being told something, what it might mean, what probability means, what a predictive model is really doing, because we can really predict things 
right, be a different world. Um, and what organizations I think are struggling is that they keep hearing how important this is, but they don't know how to get there. There's this like, almost like training and I brought up culture before, and I think the culture is really important, is that getting to like know your analysts and interacting them in a way that you're getting a feel for what they're trying to do and that when they tell you something is based on probability, and if you say, oh, I don't really know that, well, maybe it's time to break out a book or get on the web and figure out what, what they're saying. And if your data scientists, this isn't just a one-way street, are also showing you weird equations and getting too deep, they're not doing their job either because what they should be doing is, in a way, not hiding things like in a black box, but expressing to you what's important about what they found. Maybe saying something about the technique. Oh, this is probability based. Oh, this was observation based. Uh, we came to this conclusion based on, on these kind of factors. So that you know how much confidence to place in what you're hearing and what to, you know, what to think of it. Also an important part of that is knowing and admitting when you're wrong and using that as input to the next time around because no one is right all the time. So I think making it uh, interwoven as part of your business processes. I heard a guy from Zynga uh, was on, uh, I think, Knowledge at Wharton podcast, and he made a, you know, I don't know, a little hyperbole, but if you don't have a quant on your staff at 12 people, you'll never be a quantitative organization. Mm -hmm. So this notion of getting an early um, use of this and having it permeate, LinkedIn, Google, Zynga are all great examples of that. And you might look to them and see how they're staffing, how they, but you can find out about how they do business. And I think that's a way to get better at it. I do hear a lot of what I would, we call enterprise people talk about, we want to get better at this, and we're really not sure how. And we tend to bring up the culture part. Right. It seems it's not as much a technical challenge or even a scientific challenge as, a, as an enterprise cultural problem. I think it really is, because the, like I said, none of these techniques are like brand new or anything. It's more that bringing it all together and the amounts of data, the amount of sensors and stuff are making all these new opportunities to learn from, um, from data. But like I said, you have to have numeracy. You know, understand what, what it means when your analyst is doing something. And if you expect your analyst to make your business decisions, well then you should make them CEO. <laughs> um, so this whole notion of this two-way street. And of course, like I said, the analysts need to be part of that equation two, focus on the storytelling, focus on the curiosity, and having some freedom, degrees of freedom, to do some exploring and then explain what, what they found from that. So to wrap up, do you see, how do you see data science developing from where it is now? We have this, you know, you've got master of one trade, jack of quite a lot, kind of general purpose person. It doesn't seem to me that with big data catching on in enterprises, that kind of model can scale necessarily. Um, what, what's the future like? Well, I mean, it's going to require some investment and it is going to require people. So I think that's just inevitably part of it. What I think will happen is patterns will develop and that as you face problems, there'll be a little more coalescing around how to do that. Some of the, the technologies and, and, and ways of doing things are new-ish and people are still trying different ways out. And I think that they'll come to some commonality there as well. And that will help with, with productivity. But there is a certain art to designing an experiment, and there is an art to interpreting that I think will stay. So as I think it'll evolve is that everyone will just rise up in their ability through experience, through designing experience, and that also the, that people are willing to work together and some collaboration even outside of companies uh, will help in that space too. I don't expect there to be a uh, some kind of big productivity boost from where we are uh, that makes it you don't need as many folks to do the work. Roger, thanks very much. You're welcome.